This is the last half hour of the 1983 Mardi Gras season. The fascinating time when we're privileged to bring to you one of the most ornate spectacles of the entire year. The colorful meeting of the courts of Comus and Rex. I'm Terry Gerstner. It is my pleasure to be your host for WDSU Television. And with me is Ann Merrick. The Herald Trumpets have sounded the announcement of the arrival of the King and Queen of Carnival. The first formal visit took place during the carnival season of, 19, of 1882. Since that time, it has become an established custom. Now Comus and his queen rise to meet the approaching royalty. ceremony is directed on the ballroom floor by the captain of Comus. Rex and his queen are escorted by two prominent gentlemen, Mr. Brooke Duncan and Mr. Leon Irwin Jr., both former kings of Carnival. The melody you're hearing in the background is the traditional theme of Mardi Gras, If Ever I Cease to Love. Captain of Comus first escorts the Queen of Carnival to her position for the Grand March. The Queen is Miss Eleanor Spicer Bright, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Edgar Allen Gordon Bright, Jr. Her page is Master Frank Hardy Roddy, son of Mr. and Mrs. James Charles Roddy. Miss Eleanor Spicer Bright, Queen of Carnival. Captain now escorts the mythical god of mirth, Comus, to his position beside the Queen of Carnival. He places Comus to her left in order that the Queen of Carnival may hold her scepter in her right hand. Comus greets the lovely Queen of Carnival for 1983. The pages to Comus are Master Peter Ehrlich Menge, Jr., son of Mr. and Mrs. Peter E. Menge, and Master Matthew Morgan Wisdom, son of Mrs. William Bell Wisdom, Jr. The captain now escorts the Queen of Comus, Miss Ethelyn Lejean Dunbar, to her position for the Grand March. She is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Charles Edward Dunbar III. The pages to the Queen are Master G. Perry Eastman IV, son of Mr. and Mrs. G. Perry Eastman III, and Master Nathaniel P. Phillips III, son of Mr. and Mrs. Nathaniel P. Phillips, Jr. The King of Carnival, known in public life as Mr. John G. Phillips, is being placed beside the Queen of Comus. He will stand to her left. The page to His Majesty is Master Michael Quirk Walsh, Jr., son of Mr. and Mrs. Michael Quirk Walsh. The two monarchs and their queens are now in position for the Grand March. At the signal of the captain and with the members of the royalty and their courts in readiness, the Grand March will begin. 
The procession will completely encircle the ballroom as the orchestra plays the grand march from the opera Aida. of the Comus Court are Miss Elizabeth Campbell Crusell, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Cornelius Campbell Crusell, Jr. Miss Dorothy Hardy Fenna, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. James Hardy Fenna. Miss Margaret Clark Saya, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Harold Saya, Jr. Miss Lowell Davis Simmons, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. McElhenney Simmons. Miss Louise Marie Stewart, daughter of Mr. John Nelson Stewart III, and Mrs. Louise Lang Stewart. Miss Ashley Kingsland Waddock, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. James Kingsland Waddock III. The Mays and Dukes of the Rex Court are Miss Christina Evans Calhoun, escorted by Mr. Charles Edward Dunbar IV. Miss Elaine Friedrichs Jones, escorted by Mr. John Breckenridge Selman. Ms. Donna Kent Wilson, escorted by Mr. Ballot Wing Tebow II. Ms. Suzanne Wynne Friedrichs, escorted by Mr. William James Kearney IV. Ms. Catherine Glennie Parker, escorted by Mr. Stuart Scott Myler. Ms. Sean Ruth Cooper, escorted by Mr. Christian Truesdale Brown. Ms. Charlotte Kathleen Vigory, escorted by Mr. David Blair Favreau Jr. And Mrs. And Miss Elizabeth Grace Graham, escorted by Mr. Robert St. George Tucker Weinman. <laughs> Comus and the Queen of Carnival are now being escorted to the throne. being escorted to the throne.
Ice are being escorted to their positions beside Comus and the Queen of Carnival. to the audience for the monarchs and their queens. Court have taken their places along with the maids and their escorts of the Comus Court. And now the dancing begins with another song that has become traditional, the Jolly Coppersmith. Dunbar, queen of the mystic crew of Comus, is exquisite in a regal gown of white duchess satin. The tiny Empire bodice, designed with a scoop decolletage, is completely encrusted with grandiose pear-shaped and brilliant cut diamonds and simmering silver bugle beads in a stylized leaf and floral motif. This is entirely bordered with wide bands of great emerald cut diamonds and a profusion of very tiny silver beads. The magnificent banding creates a tapered obelisk in the center of the A-line skirt and outlines the hemline and court train. Highlighting the obelisk is a majestic branched candelabra-like pyramid of clusters of exotic flowers and leaves, embroidered with precious diamonds of every imaginable shape and size. Multitude of dazzling streaks of small round diamonds and shining silver bugle beads are lavishly traced throughout Her Majesty's royal raiment. 1983, Queen of Comus. Ethelyn Lejeune Dunbar is the only daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Charles E. Dunbar III. Her mother is the farmer Marguerite Stephanie Dinkins. Lynn is 20 years old. She is a graduate of Metairie Park Country Day School and has attended Newcomb College. She plans to continue her education in the fall. Lynn has traveled extensively and has visited England, France, Italy, Austria, Germany, and Mexico. Her hobbies are horseback riding, swimming, soccer, and drawing. And she's a volunteer worker at the Wild Bird Center in Audubon Park. Lynn reigned as queen of the Squires Ball and was a maid in the Ball of the Crew of Apollo. 
She was presented by the Pickwick and Stratford Clubs and at the Ball of the Debutante Club. 1983 Queen of the Mystic Crew of Comus, Miss Evelyn Lejeune Dunbar. Her Majesty Miss Bright, Her Majesty Miss Bright, Queen Consort to Rex, is resplendent in a spectacular gown of imported cloth of gold, richly embossed in an overall floral design, fashioned with a wide decolletage, which is outlined in rows of glittering silver bugle beads and sparkling brilliant cut diamonds. The gown features a slightly raised waistline from which falls a smooth skirt graduating into graceful fullness at the sides and back. Intricate beading with glistening silver bugle beads, shining gold and silver payettes, and a myriad of multi-shaped gold beads trace the tapestry-like motif of the luxuriant fabric, sparked with grand, brilliant-cut diamonds and a profusion of glittering chandelier-like droplets of golden beads and filigree balls. Her tall Medici-style collar is of gold lace re-embroidered with topaz and silver stones and gold bugle beads. Each long petal is outlined with rows of silver rhinestones. At the back of the collar is a stylized design of golden leaves from which falls her long mantle of gold jersey, deeply bordered with ermine and embroidered with geometric designs in silver rhinestones. She wears a golden crown of rex and carries a matching scepter. Spicer Bright is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Edgar Allen Gordon Bright, Jr. Her mother is Marion Erling Bright. Miss Bright is 20 years old and is a graduate of Metairie Park Country Day School. She attended the University of Kentucky in Lexington and is presently in her third year at LSU, majoring in economics. Eleanor was a member of the state champion volleyball and soccer teams, and she enjoys jogging, skating, skiing, ceramics, and computers. She's descended from a long line of royalty. Her great-great-uncle William Maley was Rex in 1879. Her great-aunt, Eleanor Bright Richardson, was queen in 1920. And her grandfather, Edgar Allen Gordon Bright was Rex in 1956. 1983 Queen of Carnival, Miss Eleanor Spicer Bright. Mr. John G. Phillips, King of Carnival, is a native of Camden, Arkansas. He received his Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration from the University of Arkansas. Mr. Phillips is married to the farmer Evelyn Richards. They are the parents of two children. Mr. Phillips serves in many civic endeavors. He is currently the chairman of the Tulane Board of Administrators, the executive board of the Boy Scouts of America, New Orleans area, and the National Advisory Board of the Boy Scouts of America. He has also been active for many years in United Way activities. Presently, he serves as Chief Executive Officer and Chairman of the Louisiana Land and Exploration Company. 
He is also a director on the following. The Bank of New York, Whitney National Bank of New Orleans, The Travelers Corporation, Alice Chalmers Corporation, Delta Airlines, and the American Petroleum Institute. Mr. John G. Phillips, the 1983 King of Carnival. The Comus Organization is a secret society and never publicly divulges its membership or where or when it meets. An invitation to the Comus Ball is strictly personal. The admittance card may be used only by the person to whom it has been issued. It may not be given or loaned to anyone else. The invitations themselves are a beautiful example of the lithographer's art. always carries a silver champagne goblet instead of a scepter. According to tradition, it is never empty. The Comus organization presents the champagne goblet to Comus as a gift. The Queen of Comus receives a tiara, which is a miniature of the crown she is wearing. The mantles are provided for both Comus and his queen, though they are retained by the organization. The mantle for the queen is sent to her home or to her dressmaker so that it may be fitted to her gown. The mantles are fashioned on a cloth of silver and an ermine border. The designs are of sequins and rhinestones. The queen's attire, as well as that of her maids, is provided by their respective families. The queen's jewels consist of her crown, necklace, and scepter. Before the days of television, scenes such as these were restricted to those very few who were invited guests of Comus. But now, through the medium of television, the public is able to see what happens during this, the last half hour of the carnival season.
Prince and his queen rise along with the king and queen of Carnival to make ready for their departure. Comus and his queen will depart first. This is a final toast to the audience. escorted by an officer of Comus. <music> Miss Ethelyn Lejean Dunbar, Queen of Comus for 1983. bid farewell to their captain. The Queen of Comus being escorted out of the ballroom by the captain. escorted by his captain. Thomas makes his final gesture to the audience. and his queen have now made their departure. The king and queen of Carnival will now leave. Captain of Comus is now escorting the Queen of Carnival out of the ballroom. Miss Elena Spicer Bright, Queen of Carnival for 1983.
Shoemaker's departure. The captain of Comus and the king of Carnival. Mr. John G. Phillips, King of Carnival for 1983. The moment has come when the incredible joy and splendor of the 1983 Mardi Gras comes to an end. Today has been one gigantic party for residents and visitors alike. A party as international as this international city. Indulgence and merriment is as old as the human race. And in the manner in which New Orleans celebrates, it is no wonder the world calls it the city that care forgot. Rene Luop and his society orchestra provided the music. Television permission granted by local 174-496 American Federation of Musicians. Special lighting effects by W.H. Spangenberg Incorporated and the international stage employees local 39. The meeting of the courts of Comas and Rex. Queen's attire described by Ann Merrick. This program was directed for television by Gary Rigsby. This is Terry Gerstner.